Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a uh, 2010 Ford F-150 with a 5.4. Customer's complaint is they're smelling coolant. So this thing got dropped off last night and I, nobody's touched it since it, it, it was parked. So I figured first things first, let me open up the hood and just take a look. So underneath the hood here, going into the overflow tank here, and it looks pretty empty. Okay, it doesn't look very good in there either. It's, it's ice cold. It's like 50 degrees here today. That's not pretty. I'm just smelling inside the radiator. Okay. Uh, it doesn't smell great, but it doesn't smell it's got, like it's got a blown head gasket or anything. So I'm going to pull this thing up to the shop and let's see if we can't figure out what's actually going on with this. Sorry, the sun glare is terrible over here. Um, it started up fine. Absolutely no issue. I didn't hear any abnormal noises. I didn't see any smoke out of the tailpipe other than some condensation. It's a cool, cool morning here. Um, so I'm just like I said, I'm going to pull it up to the shop doors. I'm going to add cool some water to it actually sorry about the glare so I'm gonna add some water to it and see what I can't figure out can I just tell you as a mechanic this is something I can't stand and I'll explain it in a second but here check this out and you go to open up the door on this thing ready those automatic running boards those steps I can't stand them why do I hate those things so much got this thing set up on a lift and let's say you have the door closed you forget this thing has those things and you set it up on a lift now all of a sudden you open up the door and the thing winds up whacking the lift I can't stand that or it just creates a problem with trying to get height out of it I don't know how much force is in those things when it's trying to push it down because they use like wiper motor type things on some of them so it's like I always worry about it breaking something that's why I don't like them I wish there was I'm sure there is a way to disable it I just don't know how all right let's get some water in this Adding water from the hose. Try not to go in like like bananas and spray it everywhere because I know pe I've seen people do that. But go in lightly, gently. Because also too, if you go in uh, like full force, you wind up getting it spraying all over the place, and sometimes you can wind up with um, like that, like water to the outside, and then you're kind of like hiding your leak. See, but even going in that gently, it's foaming up. So, yeah, I just want to get enough coolant in there so I can actually pressure test this thing. I might have to put it on the lift regardless to see if I can't figure out where this stuff is coming from. That's pretty, pretty nasty. So, I'm going to venture a guess that we're going to probably have to put a radiator in this thing, or at least a radiator cap. I mean, that's not great. You can see it pulsing. That's air coming out of the system. Hopefully, they didn't overheat this thing. Um, let me let that settle. I'm going to check the oil and a few other things while I'm at it. And the oil's not bad. It's a, it is low, but it's not... It's like at the bottom of the hash mark, so it's not terribly low. And it doesn't look like it's mixed with anything, which is a good sign. So now, like I said, I just want to... It's weird because this foam is kind of nasty. I just did what I told you not to do. Sometimes you have no control over it. All right, let me go get a pressure tester and see if I can't see if I can't get uh, some pressure in this thing and see if we can't find a leak. All right, so here we go. I have a pressure tester that uses shop air. If you have one of these designs, make sure you back off on the adjuster every time on the uh, pressure regulator. 
because I've had it to where people have turned it in and you go to plug it in and it's already at 25 PSI for some reason. So. I'm going to bring it up to 15, 18, something like that. All right. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to get a light and let me look around and see if I can't find anything leaking. Okay, I do see something underneath the vehicle. However, I don't know where it's coming from. I'm just looking with a light to see if I can't see anything. And, well, I think I do see something. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I see it. All right. So it is running. I don't know if you can see the coolant down there between the intake, but if you look, at the base of the intake there, it's leaking. I have seen a number of these things leak. There's a crossover tube. There it is. It's actually the intake gasket. There's a crossover tube here that runs underneath the intake. Sometimes you can sneak them out, sometimes you can't. You gotta pull the whole intake off, which is kind of not a fun job on this. Uh, can I focus on that? Hello. Don't let me focus. Why are you not letting me focus? There we go. All right. So yeah, see that black line there? That line running across, that's a, one of those plastic heavy gaskets. And that's actually, if I'm not mistaken on this one, that might be a separate gasket because like I said, that's a water manifold there. And I believe it's separate from the intake. But like I said, they can be a bear to get out. So let me back off on the pressure on this. Let that bleed down. But if you look, Underneath, uh, let's see. It's pouring out. All right, this thing bled down. Let me go look this up. I want to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that I can do this without pulling the intake off. Like I said, it's a little, little work, but I think you can, but I'm not positive. So I started looking up what's involved in doing this, and all of a sudden it started ringing a bell for me. The coolant crossover tube loops underneath the... Um, alternator as you see here the, the tube is actually back there uh, yeah you could get a little bit of a better view you see it crossing underneath right there and what happens is part of this front cover here catches the edge of that tube like you got to take the alternator out and if you look the intake manifold actually covers part of that crossover tube so they want you to take the intake off. However, if you get in on that front edge between the alternator and that tube, and you take a file to the edge of the cylinder head, because it's like the casting sticks out way too far, and unfortunately you can't see it here, but the casting of the front cover here, but to the backside, sticks out too far. So where this thing loops underneath, it hits, so you'll never get it out. But if you file it down, I mean, you file it down that much, and what's that going to affect? It doesn't affect anything, but you file it down that much, the tube will come out, and you don't have to take the intake off. So it's a nice little trick. It saves time, saves the customer some money, and whatnot. Um, I may not be doing this job. Oh, actually, hold on a second. Huh, I forgot all about this. Looky, looky what I have here. Uh, let's see. Wrong way. See this? I actually have a side job where I have to uh, do timing chains on this, which I will make a video on, but it's probably not going to be for a week or two before I can get to it. But here, see right here? It's this piece is what I'm talking about. And see how it sticks out? Like the gasket itself is right there. And basically what you get do is you get in here with a file and you file this down, get it a little closer to the gasket. It's not going to affect nothing. It's not going to hurt nothing. And I'm sure some of you are not going to like me saying that. But if you do that, then what happens is, as you unbolt 
this water pipe here because it's separate from the intake. As you unbolt it, you can actually slide it forward enough because if you try sliding it forward, it hits. You slide it forward and then you can actually work that pipe up and out. Like I said, alternator's got to come out. So this is a job for another day though, this motor. This is, like I said, a side job I got just doing timing chains on it for somebody. I may not be doing this particular job, so I figured let me show you that. Uh, Jaden or Nick may wind up doing this job. Um, so I figured let me just explain to you what's going to happen with it. Especially because I may not be the one doing it. Because I have other big jobs that I have to get done. Um, all right. Let's see how this goes. I may show you as they progress or, you know, unless I do it myself. I don't know yet. Um, but I'll show you as it goes on. Okay, so Nick is doing the job, and let me just show you. I showed him what to do, and there's that water manifold. So everything came off pretty nice and clean, and if you look, see the edge there? He had shaved it down, like I said. And that's perfectly fine. You're not going to hurt nothing. So but it just saves you a lot of aggravation, because otherwise you're taking that intake off. And taking that intake off, you add about three hours of labor to this job. Or, man, maybe not three, maybe two. Um, they're not fun. They're, they're kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. So unless you loosen it up, which I won't, I won't recommend this, but I've seen people where they loosen them up, lift them up a little bit just to get that water manifold out. But I don't, or crossover tube. But I don't recommend that one bit because <clears throat> you're disturbing the gaskets and how do you know you don't get a piece of junk underneath it or whatever. So, yeah, just don't recommend doing that but you can do whatever you want. Just telling you what I do. All right, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. And here are the new gaskets for that. You have one on the thermostat side and then one on the passenger side. The thermostat side, obviously, on the driver's side. Um, if you want, I can, let's see. Here's the part number, here's one of them. 35791. And 35789. See that. All right, so I'm going to let Nick finish this up. I'm actually rebuilding a C4 over there, a Ford automatic for this old Mustang here. Um, I wasn't going to go through rebuilding it. It's been so darn long since I've had one apart. It was just kind of like I had to remember how to do something like that. So me trying to make a video on it was going to be pointless. So that's why I didn't do it. Uh, but yeah, so anyway. Hopefully you got something out of that. You learned a little trick. If you ever have to do one of these, it'll save you some, save you some time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to see this real quick before I finish up. What usually happens, yeah. See right there? See how the plastic is swelled and cracked? That's usually where the leaks come from. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep brunching.